Jake Ludington here at HP Pathways to the Cloud 2012 Roadshow in Dallas, Texas. And I'm here with MJ. And what's kind of the overall sense of the show here in Dallas? Well, I think, Jake, probably the biggest thing that I've heard so far is that a lot of our customers and even a lot of our partners are very excited about a lot of the improvements that we've put into Generation 8 in the ProLiant line. Uh, they're really excited about what we've done in the areas of management, uh, deployment, installation, and, and as well service. And one of the other things that they keep talking about is the improvements that we have put into the hardware to make the product more resilient and more robust, as well as making it an easier experience for the user. So one of the things that I keep hearing about Gen 8 is all of the automation that's built in. And I jokingly said to someone else that Gen 8 is our new robot overlords. But what, what kind of automation is built in? Yeah, so I think probably the, uh, the biggest feature and benefit that we've put in so far is what we call the active health system. The active health system is a system that actually oversees every interconnected subsystem within the server. It is connected to CPUs, memory, disk drives, disk drive trays risers and I.O. and allows you to monitor every single aspect of the server. The other huge part about that is that it also records everything that it monitors and it stores that information for up to a year. The real benefit here for both our customers and our partners is that the time to resolution for any issue that may or may not come up is cut in half, up to five times less. That sounds like uh, you're going to simplify a lot of sysadmins jobs. Are we going to see people picketing in the streets because Gen 8 puts them out of work? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, I, th I think in this world today that uh, in as much as we are putting more automation into the server and helping the server to be smarter from both the hardware and the software level, the other thing that we're seeing is that the, the complexity of what we're trying to do in the cloud with our customers is also going up. And so with that added complexity, I think that the features that we've put in make it a lot easier to implement and use as the infrastructure underlying the customer's cloud. But at the same time, I think they're going to have plenty to do in managing and deploying and, and servicing these, uh, these boxes. So, so this is really more about that, that whole 70-30 paradigm where people are spending 70% of their time doing stuff that really isn't high value tasks. That's exactly it. And so some of the things that we've heard in the past from our customers is that the, the process to update a server has, has been always and, and uh, historically arduous. And so we have automated so much of that, of that process. And what we've done is incorporated pre-tested software and drivers that are accepted by and large by the system that's running automatically with no reboot required. And if a reboot is required, it's only required once. And we're moving forward to automate more of that process as well. The other thing that we've done is that that active health system that I talked about, in that it interconnects and talks to every subsystem within the box, allows us to get to resolution on any issue that's going on, including anything that may happen through a predictive alert. And I think all of this really helps the customer to have a more resilient platform, a smarter box, a box that runs and monitors and does things for itself, that way they've got more time to do things that are more proactive to really affect the business. One of the things I also heard mentioned was there's a, a smart socket, I guess. that it, What is that? So the smart socket, I'm glad you brought that up, is an HP-only innovation. What it allows us to do is it allows either a customer or any service organization to install an additional processor, uh, replace a processor, whatever the situation might be, every single time without bending a pin. And we've engineered this through our partnership with Intel in that inserting the processor, every single pin goes exactly where it needs to go the first time, every time. Zero failures. I know as somebody who uh, used to build my own computers, even, even at home, that uh, bending those pins is a real problem. How, what, what's the innovation there? How did, how did, how's it taken this many years for that to happen? <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe it's just taken this many years of pain for us to do something about it. But uh, the, the real driving factor behind this is that these processors today have over a thousand pins. And the pins, being very thin and very light, that smart socket fits in between the actual processor and the pins, allowing for a 100% match from pin to socket each and every time. And I think as things get more complex, one of the things that we're looking to do at HP is make that experience for the user easier. As complexity goes up, the opportunity for error can also go up, and we want to get rid of that. Because cloud-based solutions should be turn them on, let them run, let them do what they do, and everyone has a great experience. And we're trying to engineer that experience in from the ground up in the hardware and software. 
So we're talking a lot about the cloud here, but Gen 8 isn't, isn't just about the cloud, right? I mean, you can, you can still use it in a rack. No, absolutely not. So Gen 8 is a part of an infrastructure. It is a hardware platform that the innovations we put in with hardware and software make it is what it is today, which is a huge leap forward from G7 or G6. The fact that we mentioned cloud is that right now, cloud is one of the number one items on all of our CIO customers list. And so because of that, we want to make the infrastructure part of that number one item a lot easier to maintain, use, and have a better experience. And so whether it's a cloud-based solution or whether it's just a customer that wants to put a better server in their data center, either in the rack mount or in the blades area, we want to be there to be able to provide that solution. Now what about people who uh, may have some Gen 6, Gen 7 technology already in their infrastructure? Are they going to have to throw that out to use Gen 8 or is it all going to play well together? Absolutely not. So one of our core value propositions is that is investment protection. What you bought yesterday has got to be able to work in as much as possible with what you're going to be able to buy today. But at the same time, we cannot stop innovating. We can't stop bringing new solutions to the market that incorporate the newest technologies. So the G7 solution that customers bought yesterday, they're still going to be able to buy for well over a year from now. And it will still work in the environment just like Gen 8 does today, right, when they start implementing it. As well, a lot of the software manageability and support and service type features that we have put into Gen 8 are also backward compatible with G7. And so we want the customer that's invested in G7 today to have a great experience moving forward and also investment protection moving forward with all the new things that we've put in. Not everything we've put in is backward compatible to G7, and that's just the nature of technology. You want the latest and greatest, there is, there is some things that you have to you know, forsake, but by and large, a lot of the management features and our customers' pain points, we're trying to make those backward compatible as well. What else should we know about Gen 8? Well, I think probably the bottom line on Gen 8 and the thing I want you to keep in mind moving forward is that it has more HP intellectual property in it than any of our previous releases. It's got over, over $300 million of investment and over 900 patents were filed as far as developing this product line. If you want a more manageable, more automated, and more robust server platform, Gen 8 in the ProLine platform is the way to go. Excellent. Well, thanks, MJ. Thank you, Jay.